also like to welcome Craig Tingy, Principal Advisor, Readership Development at Rio Tinto, the world's second largest mining company. Hi, Craig. Thank you very much for joining us. How are you today? Great. Thank you very much, Marketha. It's great to be with you, and I'm doing very well today. I'm looking forward to having this chat with students. Great. You. Uh, Craig, uh, can we start by asking you, uh, what is your job description? What do you do on a daily basis in your company? So in, in my current role, um, in, in leadership development, I'm actually I've actually rotated into a leadership development role. I'm responsible for some of the key leadership development programs that we have in the company. One of them is our um, our early career uh, accelerated leadership development program. It's it's what we call our developing future leaders program. Each year, we identify about 35 high potential uh, employees in the company who we see as having potential to be general managers in the future, and we put them on an accelerated development program where they improve their skills to, to be able to take on more responsibility in the company. Uh, I'm also responsible for a key program with our, our key, our, our, our largest shareholder, uh, which is Chinalco. It's the state-owned aluminum corporation of China. And we have, um, each, each year we get uh, Chinalco executives together and Rio Tinto executives together and learn about global leadership um, and, uh, and, and make it a, a very interesting cultural experience between the Chinese entity and and uh, and also Rio Tinto, which is more of a global entity, um, and uh, so I'm I'm also uh, involved with our executive development programs, um, and and also with talent management overall. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, now I would like to ask about the industry you're in. Uh, in an interview with Group Executive of Organizational Resources at Rio Tinto, Hugo Bagge said that the image of mining is still one of people with show us. Could you tell us what do you think about that statement and what are the opportunities in your industry? <laughs> well, I have to confess that um, eight years ago, before I joined Rio Tinto, I, I never actually imagined myself working for a mining company. Um, I probably had that image of a very outdated old industry. Um, however, after, after joining Rio Tinto, um, I've been amazed with how highly technical uh, Rio Tinto is. In fact, um, and, and you know, the industry is getting there, but Rio Tinto is really on the leading edge of technology. We use drones, for example, to uh, cover the, the surface of, of the earth and, and actually take measurements of what kind of materials, what kind of minerals might be below the surface um, to take measurements on the, on the, on the surface of the earth. Um, very high, highly technical um, Types of types of equipment. We 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 have what we call autonomous um, trucks and Earth, Australia, where um, literally people are sitting at a computer operating a a truck which is bigger than most people's homes <laughs> by far, um, and, and and they are literally operating that truck two thousand miles away almost like a computer game um, uh, because the, the truck doesn't have a driver. We're able to do that autonomously. We can operate trains that way. And we do that for safety reasons. We do it because um, it, it actually increases efficiency um, and, uh, and, and, um, and also reduces cost overall. So mining is actually something, it's, it's an industry that is, that is really um, you know, defining the future on, on how we really operate on, on Earth. Um, you see in the movies, uh, mining being done um, in space, that's something that is possible in the future. And, and including you know, mining under the ocean is certainly something that's, uh, that's very possible in the future. So I think mining is an industry where, where technology and innovation um, will, will, will be uh, thriving uh, substantially in the future. Thank you, Craig. That was really interesting. Uh, now, uh, can you tell us, please, personally, what were the skills you had to acquire in order to get where you are right now? And what skills do you think are the key to focus on when getting ready for a career in Rio Tinto? So that's that's a good question, um, Marquette. And I, I think, you know, this is probably true of most companies. Um, I think initially, when you first come into a company, you really need to prove yourself technically. You need to be able to, to, you know, to understand and do the responsibilities that, that you have. 
Um, whether that's um, in engineering, whether it's in finance or IT or any of the functions, I, I came in through through HR. Um, so you have to understand the, the technical aspects of, of your function. But then, um, more than that, um, the people who, who progress in companies are those who actually get results um, and can influence um, the organization in positive directions. So what I mean by that, the type of skills that, that are needed is is really figuring out how to align yourself with the strategy of the company so that you can make sure that you can always um, demonstrate how what you're doing is adding value to the company. And then expanding that to others around you. So if we're leading people or if we are um, um, you know, just working on a team, how do we influence others to make sure that we are all aligned on the strategies of the company? So that, that's one I, I would say alignment. Secondly, simply you know getting results um delivering on what you promise meeting your commitments um a achieving what you've been asked to do but then even more importantly going beyond that how can how can i add more value than what's expected and those are the people who, who then get uh, operation or, uh, opportunities to move forward um i'd say the people skills of influencing and you know relationship building um being able to network what's interesting is most companies um, that I've worked in in my career, including Rio Tinto, uh, things get done through the relationships that you have. Um, so it's not just enough to have a position of authority and then tell people what to do. Um, it, it's really all about developing relationships with people so that you can influence uh, and 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 help people um, to understand why they need to do what the company is asking them to do. Um, so influence and relationship building is another one. And then and then uh, I, so so just. In, I would just say, you know, your technical skills get you to the table, but once you're at the table, it's those skills of influencing, relationship building, um, and, and, and simply getting results that allow you to influence the, the rest of the organization. Great. Really allow, uh, thank allow you. you yeah. yeah, actually, let me, let me, I, I, think I, would, I think I would restate that. You know, I, I think it's, it's more about, you know, the influencing to make an impact in, in the organization. Um, that uh, you know, it's it's uh, you know those softer skills are are what allow you to actually make an impact on the organization positively. Well, thank you, correct. It's very motivating. What you said. Uh, now I hold in mind the next question, which is going to be a provocative one. Isn't mining a dangerous and quite a dirty business where companies are being often accused for trying to exploit countries and their local communities? Well, that's a that is a pretty hard hitting question, and um, you know, I, I'd have to say, as an industry, um, unfortunately, there may be some who operate that way, um, I, and and it is embarrassing to to uh, to those of us in the industry who who do not uh, operate that way. Um, I, I'd say one thing: if, if there's any any value that is held more deeply and and more importantly than any other value in Rio Tinto, it's safety. Um, and and anywhere you go in Rio Tinto, what you will first notice and what you will first see is a, a clear emphasis on safety. Um, Rio Tinto has, um, has has gone to great lengths to make sure that that we uh, so we're really trying to change the image of mining. Um, mining probably does have a bit of a bad image out there. But um, the reality is um, companies like Rio Tinto who engage with communities very positively are looking to create win-win situations um, and, and truly win-win situations, not only if it benefits the, the mining company like us, but if it truly adds, adds um, value and improves lives to people in the communities where our mines are, and if we can increase employment and, and, and enable the economies to grow and make sure that we um, that we restore the environment to how it was before we got there. Those are all very, very key values that Rio Tinto holds holds deeply. So we're trying to change the image of mining, um, and uh, and I think we're we're being very successful. You talk to the people in the communities where we operate. I think you'll find that that uh, that they find us being very, very helpful and, and good partners to work with. Um, so that's. Uh, that's one of the reasons, frankly, why I joined Rio Tinto eight years ago and why I, I still love and enjoy the company very much. Great. Thank you, Craig. Uh, now, uh, as you know, uh, 
Dot's main objective is to bridge uh, education to employment gap. And according to McKinsey report from 2013, 70% of educators think their graduates are prepared for work. Yet less than 50% of employers agree. Could you tell us, please, what do you think is the cause and what could be a solution for such a striking image? Hmm. Oh, that's a that's a very very a thought provoking thought provoking question. I think um, you know why is that the case? I, I, this is just my personal opinion. I, I my my experience at university was that um, the professors that I dealt with had been professors for pretty much their whole life and, and really did not have um, experience in, in, the, in the working world. In some cases, they had some experience, but, but were probably not very current. So I think, um, I think what happens is, is, you know, there's a, this, this for students, um, but it's, it's not very much like the working world. I think one of the things I think Node is actually I've been very very impressed with with Node as a as a solution to that. The fact that students can go out and have up to two years of experience, as you mentioned, um, in the field at an employer in the real world, um, to learn more on site at an employer than they ever would in in the classroom. They learn more about what what it means to succeed in the workplace, what it means to influence in the workplace. Um, what it means to be to work on a team. Um, very often, university education focuses on the individual, you know, learning what they need to learn and being tested and and uh, um, and, and 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 being evaluated as an. In, in the working world, it's all about teamwork. Um, you you always are working with teams, and you're always are getting results with a group of people. Um, and so, I think that the nodes um, approach of of learning in teams presenting to teams, influencing in teams, um, and, then, and then going on site for real experience will, will help tremendously in, in helping people be much more prepared for the workplace. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Craig. You just uh, actually answered my next questions already, uh, which is great. Uh, uh, therefore, I, I was thinking to move to your uh, questions from our students. I'd like to ask a question from Catherine. She's asking which competitive advantage does the mining industry have uh, over the industries, over other industries? Yeah, that's that's actually a very good, very good and insightful question. Um, you know, the mining industry um, is providing the resources that are being used to build the modern world. So as, as you know, each of us are probably working off laptops right now. If you think what is used to, to construct a laptop, and, and thank you, that, that slide actually shows. Borates are actually what, what, what compose uh, the, the screens that we're looking at. Um, borates are essential to, for, for any kind of screen, especially touch screen technologies. Um, copper is used in the wiring, um, that in, the, in the circuit boards that are in the computers. Um, uh, you know, iron ore, uh, there, there's probably steel in, in, uh, in, in most of the computers. Um, titanium dioxide is actually a, a, uh, an agent that for dioxide. We have energy products like uranium and, and coal, which, which produce, you know, which are used for, for electricity production that, that our computers are run from. Um, Uranium is used to generate power as well. Uh, it, it goes on and on. So what, what's a competitive advantage that, that the mining industry has over other industries is there will always be this need for basic resources to build the world around us, the buildings that we have, the community, the roads, the, the, um, um, you know, the, the cities. Um, so that, that's one. I would say also another, another interesting competitive advantage, mining companies tend to be um, because of the geographical mix that you tend to have in mining companies, they tend to be very, very diverse. And Rio Tinto is, is that way. And in fact, there's a slide, I, I think it might even be the next slide on slide four, Marquetta, that shows where we operate. Um, you can see the diversity of, uh, of countries. Now, many countries may have global footprint, but one of the interesting things about, about Rio Tinto is we're not just in the cities. 
we are in cities, but we also um, operate in, in remote areas. So you, you get a chance to really impact and, and, and be exposed to the you know, kind of the real world in, in each country. Um, and so it's, uh, it, it's, it's very interesting that way. I would also say that, that another competitive advantage that the Rio Tinto would have in terms of you know, attracting people to work at, 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 a, at a mining company um, is that, um, that it has a big impact on, on the communities and, and, and countries. Let me give you an example. We, we, um, Rio Tinto has, has worked with the, the country of Mongolia, and we have, um, uh, we have done a project and scaled up a, a, a mine in Mongolia. And Mongolia has previously not been, you know, a very, a very, um, you know, wealthy country. It's, a, it's, it's, it's been, you know, very much of a developing country. Just our mining operation um, it, it now composes a third of Mongolia's GDP. Actually, it's probably closer to 40 percent. It's a tremendous uh, impact on on that country, um, and it's and it's helping to transform, to bring in a lot more technology, to bring in. Um, and, and helping more people to to have employment um, and and uh, and opportunities for, for learning than, than they have in the past. So um, it's the opportunity to make a real big impact on countries and communities and uh, and parts of our world um, where that, that, that you may not otherwise be able to do. Speaking, um, Marquette, oh, okay, now I can, now it sounds like the sound is on. Yeah, it's great. sorry, there was some okay. disruptions. Uh, yeah, uh, can I go on with the questions? I, I hear you now, yes. Yeah, so now we have a question from Kate. Uh, she's wondering what uh, expectations do you have for your employees or which qualifications do you look for when someone comes to your company for interview? Mm, okay, good, good question, Kate. Um, I'd say that the thing that that we look for most when when we're looking to hire someone is um, is a connection with our values. Um, we we have we have the, the following four values are our our core values: um, respect, integrity, teamwork, and accountability. And so, people who have who have who've been able to demonstrate that these are, are their values, I think, are 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 likely to be. Um, you know, to be people that we would be looking at. I'd say above all, but if I could, if I could say, what one value do we value above all? It, it's it's safety. Um, we we have a passion for safety. So if if people show that that safety is important to them, um, and that they actually you know care about the safety of others around them, um, especially you know the communities in which we operate. Um, that that uh, then then they will succeed at Rio Tinto. Um, that it's you know safety is is more important than anything else. I would say also, and and this slide has a has a, some really good messages on it. The motivation to learn is uh, is very important. Um, you know, we live in a world, and and mining is a world where things are always changing. As I mentioned earlier, some of the technologies that we are um, you know that we are uh, now implementing in the company. They're, they're things that the world has never seen before. And so we need people who are innovative and willing to learn and create and, and, and develop. Um, we also um, want people who have a demonstrated value, excuse me, a demonstrated ability to add value, to create you know, value in, in a company, to bring um, you know, certainly profitability, but to bring success and, and, to, and to maintain the, the strong reputation of the company. Um, so that just to circle back to our values, um, people of integrity, uh, people who will who will tell the truth, who will um, who will respect the communities that we're in, who will respect their their um, their uh, their colleagues, and uh, and treat treat one another as as you know being important. Um, those those are skills. I, I'm sorry, not skills, but but really qualities that we would look for in someone to hire. So would you say it's rather these qualities uh, than a really a specific or concrete degree? Um, you know, like we were talking about before, you know, the, the degree and the technical aspect, you do need a, the technical to be able to get to the table. Um, but but uh, just like in, in a job search, many people will have those, those skills and abilities, 
but the, the qualities that I talked about are the ones that will set people apart, that this is the person that we want to hire, or this is the person we want to promote. Right, right. From Joseph, uh, how, a personal question to you as well. How has been your experience get to manage such a big firm? <laughs> well, um, you know, in, in, in my career, I've actually, actually started off um, with, with large companies. I started off in a, in a, in a consulting environment. Um, the company is now called Accenture. But, uh, but it, when I joined, it was called Anderson Consulting. Um, and and I've, I've been lucky to, to have, have um, started off just by simply you know, uh, working in, in large companies from the beginning. Um, how did that happen? I think, I think the, the, um, you know, the opportunity to be in, an, in a consulting organization where I learned a lot about a lot of different companies, um, a lot of industries. Uh, I, 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 was, I did some work in the aerospace industry, in the insurance industry, um, before, before then joining my first large company. So, um, um, you know, that, that's, that's really how it happened. I think it's, it's just a matter of the choices um, that, that, we, that we make, you know, kind of where we, where we choose to be looking for a job. Um, it's just as easy to, to, in my opinion, to be hired by a large company uh, as, as a small company. <laughs> Um, so it, it really is depends on what is it that you're really looking for in your career and your life and what will best meet your needs. Great. Thank you. And Joseph also would like to ask uh, if you could tell us uh, with uh, our not project based learning if if you think uh, our students are on the right path to gain a meaningful career. Um, yeah, Joseph, certainly. I think um, I, as, as I think about a typical week or month or year, um, it, it, it all it all sort of is organized around um, you know we the the um, the the, per, the learning programs, the leadership programs that I do. Really, I have to run as a, as a large project. Um, when you know I, I'm I'm actually asked to be uh, doing some consulting now in the company. We have an internal trans transformation going on in HR. And, and I'm, I'm being asked to come in as an internal consultant, and that's essentially another project that we're that we're working on. So uh, virtually, I, I would say 90 to 100 percent of what I do is in the context of a project um, with a clear objective, with a team to work with, um, with with you know a clear um, you, you know critical path to follow. Um, so I think that that as you get in the habit in in working with Node, in working in projects and teams you're going to be very well prepared uh, for the real world of work. Great, that sounds very optimistic. Thank you. And uh, uh, Jairus is asking uh, what opportunities there would be for, for Norris to, to do maybe internships in Rio Tinto. Well, um, Rio Tinto, the mining industry overall is a very cyclical industry. And, and when times are good, we tend to hire a lot of people and hire a lot of interns and <clears throat> hire a lot of college, college graduates. When times are not so good, we tend not to be hiring as much. So timing has a lot to do with it. But we, we certainly do, we, we have and, and still have, it's probably not as active now because times are a little rough, um, frankly. But, um, but we do have opportunities for internships. Mm -hmm. How to do that, um, there are um, you know, online, um, ways of, of uh, you know through our through our, our website the Rio Tinto website you can you can apply online for internships um, you can also contact uh, local Rio Tinto offices and and those those contacts can be found on our web as well um, but um, uh, you know very often we will go out to you know, universities that have mining programs uh, and 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 look for interns um, I think that's one of the things that that you know I'm I'm personally hoping to a, a develop a relationship with Node where we can do internship, uh, you know, through through the Node network as well. That's something that I think we'll be working on together with Node over the next several years. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Craig. Uh, I think we can the rest of the questions uh, later. For now on, I would like to thank you for your kind participation in Node Career Chats, and also thank you, Nodis, for your interesting questions.
And to find out more about NOTS online project-based learning degrees, uh, you can visit uh, NOTNet or, or like our Facebook or follow the Twitter page. And to continue this discussion, we would uh, like you to invite to uh, not linking and now thank you Craig again and Norris until next time have a wonderful day thank you my pleasure good luck everyone